Recently, Pestley and Nikita had a interview that took place over the course of two days where Pestley, a well-known streamer in the Tarkov space, and Nikita, the lead developer of Battlestate Games, which makes Escape from Tarkov, had a discussion about the future of Escape from Tarkov. And after watching a few breakdown videos from other people in the community, I feel like people misheard some things or they miswrote down some things. I want to give some clarification from my standpoint. So first thing is, will there be wipes in 1.0? I was confused by this after watching breakdowns until I went back and rewatched the section of the interview. I did watch the entire interview, had questions, and I wrote them down. And I went back and rewatched it, and most of them were answered. So, and one of the big ones was my understanding of Tarkov in the future is there was always supposed to be a persistency to this game. You know, if I want to play my character for two, three years, I don't have to deal with wipes. There's some confusion that the game is going to always wipe and that your character is expected to always seasonally wipe once or twice a year. That is not the case. And for proof. So you did touch on it before. There will be wipes when 1.0 comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be like a seasonal, like there's the standard there will, there will path of exile? Profile. There will be several profiles. There will be main account without wipes and the seasonal account with prestige system. So the prestige system is pretty big thing, actually. Pretty big. It will give you not only like the, the count of uh, number you, like you escaped from Tarkov, you, you completed the wipes, but also it will give you a lot of unique stuff. And that's why we're forcing it also for the release. So the prestige system will be pretty big thing. Uh, this makes me very happy because I misheard this the first time I heard it too. I had to go back and listen to it. Like I said, I'm happy to hear that it's that there's going to be a persistency to Tarkov and it's not just going to be wipe state. I know this is a division in the community, but I honestly dislike the wipe state of Tarkov. I understand people look at it and they get excited by it. And hey, it's a wipe time. It's new. It's changing stuff. I'm like, I just want to log in and play Tarkov. Like, I don't want to do the same tasks over and over again. The game loses its charm the more wipes you play, in my opinion. I don't see the point of Tarkov being a seasonal game. For me, anyways. I can understand why some people would want it. I can understand why content creators would want it. I can understand why competitive players want it. That's never something I've wanted out of Escape from Tarkov. Uh, when Pestley did put out that he was doing this interview, he asked on Twitter, do people have questions? For me, I have two major issues. One is that one of my big disdains for Tarkov, and the only reason I don't like dying in Tarkov is because of the loading screens. I don't care about the gear. I don't care about anything else. It's the fact that I have to spend a third of my time in this game just staring at a load screen sometimes. My main concern, though, for Tarkov has always been the idea of these unconscious systems and this idea of getting when you get downed, you're not immediately taken out of raid. When your friend goes down, they're not immediately sent back to the load screen. Our characters take hundreds of rounds and then go back out three seconds later after, you know, you talk to th a therapist. There's already a gamified system here. Like if your buddy goes down and you can revive them, that changes Tarkov and how you play it so much. Because most people, when their buddies go down, they don't push them. They don't try to make a play for those bodies. There's no sense of urgency other than I want to dictate the flow of combat. And whether that means you retreat or you push, it, you now become the master of your own fate versus if there's an unconscious body here that you can get your teammate back. That chain, it, It's such a game changer. I, I appreciate Pestley for bringing up the idea of the unconscious systems. I'm not a huge fan of Nikita's response on it in that it's going to be delayed because it's still in the R&D phase and they don't effectively the, the way I translate this is they don't want to release it until it's ready. And my fear is that means we probably won't see uncon states until probably another two years at the very least. It's sad. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe we'll get it as a nice treat someday. But anyways, you can hear them talk about it right here. Unconscious state and the use of a defib in game. Still like the state of R&D, like a lot of stuff like animations like additional kind of stuff advanced animations they were being done constantly but i don't know when exactly we should actually implement it because it's a game changer and it will bring a lot of testing a lot of bugs and everything so i think uh, we'll edit someday i guess but we'll see so right now we are not like forced but yeah kind of forced to cut things out really because otherwise it, it will it go just... on for another year, another year, another year, yeah, yeah. So that's why we need to just push it and just cut it out and 
move forward. So some features will be packed later for the DLC. Some features will be totally canceled. So yeah, it's 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 a usual thing. The other thing that got talked about was PMC Karma, which I wasn't really expecting a lot of people to care about because it's been such a backburner conversation. The insight into Nikita's thought process here actually changed how I viewed PM TMC Karma because I've always viewed PMC Karma in the same way we viewed Scav Karma in that if I kill, if I'm a bear and I kill bears, I lose karma. If I'm a USEC and I kill USECs, I lose karma. That's how I think everybody's interpreted the system. The way he describes it, though, I'm getting the impression that this is going to be more location based. The idea of shooting people in extracts, and I could see the idea of light keepers in game, for example, shooting people that are talking to light keeper. The idea he's getting at here is he wants to combat people doing bad things in the game, but combat them in game. If you want to extract camp is the example he uses, you're going to be hunted down and killed. However, like it's still a gameplay thing in the game. That's what I love about this. It's still you can still extract camp. There's now something from the game perspective to help combat that, which I'll let Nikita explain it here. PMC comma right now. I kind of thinking about that. It will be added uh, not straightforward. It will be some concealed uh, characteristic of your, of your player you will not know at, f at the first time how exactly you should lower it or make it higher of course the data miners will data mine the shit of the game and they will know how to do it so oh, there's a lot of stress about pmc karma is is it going to be in a way that it, it'll only affect you in a minor way or is it going to be like if you don't play the game how you're meant to with the pmc karma side of things it's going to stop you from progressing so what I mean by that is, is it going to be in a way that you might just not be able to buy a couple of things, or maybe if you're a bad man, you'll get like access to certain type of clothing. Whereas like, if you're a good person, you'll get like, oh, I don't know, the, the really nice clothing or something. Is it going to be down that path or is it going to be like actually game stopping? So right now it's the first thing that we want to implement related to the um, karma is that we'll add new boss and uh, he will be a bounty hunter and will actually hunt, hunt players with the bad karma and that's it for now. Okay. That's so cool. he will he will hunt you down if you have a low karma. Like for example, uh, if you will sit in the bushes <laughs> too long at the extraction, it will count the negative karma. And we will have different things like that to lower it or get it higher. But it will not be shown yet because we, we will test it. We will see how it will go and then we will implement it fully. The final thing from the interview I want to talk about because it just I saw a few videos talking about it and kind of railing about it, which is the replay system for Arena being used in Escape from Tarkov. The replay system in Arena is bad, number one. It just is. If you haven't played, I haven't played Arena in a long time because I, I played it and it was just, it's a very unenjoyable experience currently. I'm going to give it another shot here at some point, but I wasn't having too much fun with the game last time I picked it up. Getting back to the replay system, there are people talking about how this replay system would be a great way for people to understand cheaters. And I would agree with that statement if the replay system in arena was good what i don't like though and i agree with a lot of people's responses on this is bsg effectively saying that a replay system is too hard for them is there any plan to implement the kill cam from arena into the main game either post raid or or in any shape or form because i think that also would help people understand that they did, didn't die to cheaters they died to being outskilled or they did die to a cheater and they weren't outskilled. Um, so either post raid kill cam uh, when the server's finished, like everyone's out of the raid, can they go back and watch it? I think that would help also people being more accurate with reporting of cheaters. Uh, it, it can be done, but it will we will need a lot of time to make it right. A lot of time to make it workable, like to to store this replay somewhere with that amount of uh, like the raid and sessions that we are having right now. Uh, it will be like, too too hard for us. If we will try to to make it like start to make it right now, we will spend like several months or even more time for that, and we cannot allow it to to be happen because literally we have more important stuff to do. And uh, we will think about it. We will think about something that will give like clarification, additional clarification how how you how you died actually. We will think about it. Okay. I don't know what they mean by that. 
what that because that tells me that they have no internal replay system right now, which is makes so much more sense as to why they have trouble understanding cheaters. From their perspective, it would help out a lot, even if it's he talks about it taking up a lot of data and a lot of space. It doesn't have to. We don't need high fidelity graphics for a kill cam. I don't think a replay system is a bad thing for the community, and I don't think that that's not a priority for the community. One of my biggest complaints about Tarkov has been for a long time the post raid screen in that you get almost no information about your raid. I know I don't I don't necessarily I don't want Arena's replay system. I don't want like War Thunder's replay system where you can download the entire match effectively i'd be very interested in some kind of replay system but not arenas that that's my point and, and i guess this is this is two different versions of tarkov we're talking about playing here i don't necessarily care if i get outplayed by somebody shooting me or if somebody shoots me and you know they shoot me through a wall they throw a grenade weird something like that like there's so many audio cues and there's so many things that could have led up to that moment of that person making that shot that their angle and perspective I would find it for the most part pointless to watch. I, I'd enjoy a more UAV top down recon footage so I could understand how players arrived at the position to kill me. I, I suggest you guys go watch the full interview. It's about an hour and a half. It's pretty dense. Um, you do have to be somewhat decent at interpreting Nikita isms. Uh, and the way to describe that is Nikita's first language is not English. And so there are things he's saying that don't mean what you think they mean a uh, easy example of this there's a point where he's talking about youtube and he doesn't know the right word for videos so he's using the word movies but he knows movies is wrong and he knows clips is wrong but he's saying it's like clips like movies because he doesn't know the word videos and so there are words and there are there are things lost in translation because this is Nikita speaking in English. Uh, this has always been a source of contention in the community. You know, there's translations and then there's interpretations. Nikita is translating for himself and we have to interpret what he means. And that can be challenging and, and difficult uh, for people that don't have the greater context of Tarkov or haven't listened to Nikita speak English or heard his his Russian translated interviews. We can all complain about Tarkov as much as we want, but at the end of the day, we're all still it's staying installed on a lot of our computers and we keep coming back to it and booting it up for a reason. It's good gameplay design. It just has a lot of broken features and it needs a lot of love still. Thank you for checking out my channel. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed something. Like I said, make sure you go give some love to uh, Pestley for doing this interview. I, I appreciate him for doing it because it took a lot of patience to for him to read through <laughs> as many things as he did to get a good. He got a pretty good cavalcade of questions out there. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of all the answers that we got. But anyways, peace.